We have a statement about circles and we're asked to identify if it's sometimes, always, or never true. So what is the statement? Well, it says if a radius bisects a chord of a circle, then it is perpendicular to that chord. So this is something I guess you could memorize, but I think you can also kind of um, quickly infer if this is true or not by uh, basically setting up a simple proof. So you would, I would start by drawing a circle, right? And, oops, I should probably draw it so that you can see it. Do that again. So, I mean, with these questions, I think it's important to draw out what's happening so you can make sense of it. Don't stress out if you can't identify right away what's happening, but you want to draw it out to start to think about what they're even saying. So they're saying, right, here's the center, let's say. They're saying you have a radius. Okay, so I would draw a radius. All right, so this is our radius. And we'll call that um, radius R, right? And we're told that it bisects a chord of a circle. A chord could be a diameter, but a chord uh, is essentially a, a line that goes from one point on the locus to another point. The locus is the co collection of points that forms the circle. So I'll draw the diameter so that it looks perpendicular to think about what's happening here, right? So there's my, my student, that's my chord, not my diameter. So we'll call our chord C. So they're saying in this case that if a radius bisects the chord of a circle, then it is perpendicular to that chord. So what do we know? Well, we know that this chord is bisected, and that means it's cut in two equal pieces by the radius. That's what we're given. The question is, do we th are we then able to say that it's perpendicular to that chord, right? Is that true? And the answer is yes, it's always true. But how can we, how can we think about that? How can we show that R and C are perpendicular to each other, right? Maybe this statement R is perpendicular, right? To C, how do we how do we prove that? Well, the proof is is pretty straightforward, um, and it's worth your time because not only it will reaffirm what you're thinking that it is always true. Let's say you're, you're thinking that, um, but it also shows you that you're definitely correct. So let's let's redraw this, right? And this time we'll we'll just label it a little bit differently. So here, um, instead of just the radius, I just draw the whole diameter, so we can think of this in terms of diameters as well, because really this is a also bring up the relationship between diameter and chords. So that's a diameter. And let's have um, the points A, B form our chord. So here we have a point, right, A, and a point B over here. So I'll draw my, my chord. So A, B forms our chord, right? And we'll call the center of our circle O. It's o is often used for origin or uh, the center point of a circle. And let's say the diameter is formed by points C, D. C, D. And let's say they meet at this point here, the meeting point or midpoint M. So we use M for midpoint. We know it's a midpoint, right, because we know that our radius bisects the chord. So what we're able to now prove really quickly by using congruent triangles is that this does indeed form a right angle. And here's how I think about it. So first of all, we're given that AM, that's this piece right here, AM, let me label it right there, is congruent to BM right here. These two pieces are equal. And then, usually, I think I find a lot of these proofs, if you draw a radius in or a radius or a diameter, they're very helpful because they're constant values. So if I draw OB, right, and I draw OA, well, here, those are the hypotenuses, or let's say, for the, at this time, they're the sides of triangles B, O, M, and A, O, M. And they're equal because what? Well, those two lengths are both a radius. They're each a radius of the circle. So of course they're equal. The radius has to always be equal to itself. So now we have these two triangles, A, O, M, right here, and B, O, M, over here, right? So we have these two triangles, and they're certainly congruent. How can we prove that? Well, I know that triangle AOM is congruent to triangle BOM by the side 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 postulate, right? Because first of all, R and R are equal to each other. They're both radiuses, right? So AO is congruent to um, BO. 
So AO is congruent to BO, right? That's because all radiuses are equal to each other. And I know OM, which is a side in both triangles, is congruent to itself, and that's the reflexive property, right? And I also know that AM is congruent to BM. And that's a given, right? That's the assumption. The assumption is that the radius bisects the chords. So those are equal. So these are the three sides of each triangle, and they're both equal to each other. So what? Well, that really helps us because here, you know, this angle right here, this angle, that's a straight angle. It's 180 degrees, and I know that because it's an angle on the line. I also know, let me clear that off, I also know that AMO, this angle right here, and BMO, this angle right here, are equal to each other. Well, if you have two angles that are equal to each other, and they add up to 180, what does each angle equal, right? Angle X plus angle X adds up to 180 degrees. What's the value of each angle? Well, X plus X is 2X. That equals 180. Divide both sides by 2, right? And X equals 90 degrees. In other words, both of those angles are 90 degrees, so they're perpendicular. Now, you don't want to just stop here with this question because, of course, they could add variations of this. So this is always true. What are some other ways they might ask you to think about this type of question? Well, in this scenario, they start with a radius bisecting a chord and then finish with it being perpendicular to that chord. Well, we can reverse that process and still show that it's true. So let's just show that really quick. So here we have another circle. And now it's a slightly different scenario, right? Here's O. And this time, we don't know that the radius bisects the chord, right? Here's our radius. We know that the radius is perpendicular to the chord. So I'll set up a very similar kind of diagram. So, and we'll use the same, same values, right? This is A, and this is B. And our diameter, again, is CD meets at point M here. And I could extend the diameter, I'm just not going to draw it right here. So now we know that this angle is a right angle. And let me write M, sorry, in a different location. Right right here. We know that these two angles are right angles. That's what we're given. We're trying to figure out, if that happens, is the chord bisected? Well, the answer is yes. We can actually quickly prove that these two triangles are congruent because they're right triangles. So if I draw a radius OB and a radius OA, right, because we know these are right angles, that means we also know that these two triangles are right triangles. So this triangle right here, right, AMO, and this triangle over here, BMO, are both right triangles. And in that case, we can prove quickly that triangle AMO is congruent to triangle BMO by using the hypotenuse leg postulate. And that just tells us if we have one leg, that's equal in both triangles, and one hypotenuse that's equal in both triangles, and they're both right triangles and they're congruent. That's exactly what we have, right? This side right here and this side right here are both the hypotenuses, and they are equal because they're both equal to the radius. OM is equal to itself, that's a leg, therefore these two triangles are congruent. And if that's true, corresponding parts of, con of congruent triangles are equal, that means that AM and BM are also equal in value, right? This is equal to this over here. And that's because they're both congruent triangles. So the point is that um, however you're given this, which is that the radius bisects the chord, or the diameter bisects a chord, or vice versa with chords and perpendicular and radius or diameter, you can show um, what's going to happen. Thank you.